Here at IBM, we've perfected the process of modernizing legacy applications by working directly with our customers. Now, we picked up some tips and tricks along the way, and we wanted to share that with you with the exact approach we take with the IBM Garage. Now, today, we're going to talk about what's called the IBM Garage methodology, which we use with our clients to ensure that they're using the latest and greatest cloud technology and accelerating their digital transformation. Now, within any organization, there's going to be some of the latest and greatest tools that are being used, as well as processes. Now, at the center of all of this is going to be what I call the culture. Now, this is critical to any team taking on a digital transformation. And that's because you might be using the latest and greatest tools and implementing the processes, but without the actual users and, and you know, the employees within your company adopting these technologies, you're not going to see a successful digital transformation. So to enact any sort of uh, transformation, you need to start thinking about the culture. This means adopting approaches like agile methodologies, maybe moving from waterfall techniques. So that's some of the things that I'm going to be covering today in the garage methodology. And I'd say there's six facets that kind of surround the key of it all, that's the culture. And the first one that we're going to start with today, we'll call it Discover. Now here's when you're identifying key objectives within your organization. So for a lot of organizations, this can be something like TCO, or total cost of ownership. This is critical. Cost savings are a big concern for a lot of clients moving to the cloud. And in addition, understanding what taking advantage of some of these latest and greatest capabilities is going to cost them. But it's more than just that. It's about understanding objectives of you know, what you want to accomplish. So say, for example, your company is growing, and you're getting more and more support tickets, and your support team just can't handle them. Well, you could throw money at the problem and increase your support staff, but that's not always scalable. Or maybe your applications aren't performing as well, and there's higher latency. So how do you start maybe taking advantage of the elasticity in the cloud to tackle that? So in the first facet, discover, here's where you start laying out some of those objectives. Next up, let's talk about Envision. Now here's where you start identifying solutions to some of these problems. Now there's key techniques for this. So for example, you might want to create an MVP or a minimum viable product. This allows your team to work towards an easy, you know, cupcake size solution that drives value and results and then start building on top of that. In addition, there's a concept called design thinking. And we do this a lot here at IBM. Before we start developing any feature or even a bigger solution or capability, we make sure that we understand how users are going to use it and that design is involved in every step of the way. So here's where you start thinking of solutions. So for example, some of the problems that we laid out in the discover step, maybe your applications are not performing as well. Well, take advantage of the cloud to replatform and kind of take advantage of maybe a Kubernetes platform to enable better scalability. In addition, maybe for that support ticket issue, take advantage of a chatbot so that uh, easy questions are answered by an automated system before escalating to a real human being that can support an issue. So that's the second facet in vision. Now the third one I want to mention here, um, kind of going through the flow here, is going to be develop. Now here's where we're starting to think about quality code. Now say you've got a number of uh, legacy applications that you've got and you're bringing them into this next decade. A developer that you hire five years down the line, are you really going to feel comfortable with them diving in and kind of making changes to this older code? Well, if not, now's the time to start thinking about clearing up some of that technical debt. You can start taking advantage of refactoring strategies to maybe move from older school programming languages to newer ones. Maybe use container-based technologies. So that's one clear thing. Another one I want to mention, a lot of us have heard of TDD which is test-driven development, basically writing the tests before writing the code so the code matches the functionality expected. But there's a new approach called BDD, which takes up one uh, abstraction layer higher called behavior-driven development. Now, this enables you to focus on the features and how people are going to actually use them. This involves user research. And so this is a key step that's going to enable you to focus on uh, 
first the behavior of using the capabilities and then actually dive in deeper and, and start thinking about how they're implemented, maybe then writing the test cases, and then finally the code. So BDD is a, a very interesting piece of this develop flow. And one more I'll mention is CI and CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. This enables development teams to really keep up with the speed of agile methodologies. And so I think it's a critical part with any you know, DevOps cycle in life uh, and flow. It, it's really important for your teams to start thinking about continuous integration and continuous delivery. Step four that I want to mention is uh, reason. Now this is about infusing AI across your business processes and all the data that's being generated. So I'm going to simplify this one and just say data science. Now the main thing here is that kind of encompasses AI and machine learning as well. So for example, say you're a logistics company, this is where you can start taking advantage of something like demand forecasting. So instead of waiting for the demand to come in and then scrambling to prep your distribution centers, what if you use the historical data of the last time there was a lot of demand? And then use maybe the weather channel APIs for you know, inclement weather situations. And then use that to find correlations to you know, respond to demand and forecast it before it even comes in. Now that's a great way to take advantage of data science uh, and infusing that into your processes to drive new value. Um, next up, we've got operate. Now, operate is a key phase here. We're, we're going to be thinking about things like operational excellence. There's new modern strategies for operations. So things like a dark launch. A dark launch is going to enable you to release a feature behind a feature flag and see how people respond to it. See how your infrastructure responds to it. If it doesn't do so well, turn that feature flag off, figure out what went wrong. That leads me into A-B testing. Now, A-B testing enables you to release two kind of variations of a similar capability to different subsets of users to see which ones they react to more positively. So this is a great way of identifying you know, which approach to take moving forward. So A-B testing is a really critical part of the operational steps. And I think the last one I want to mention here, and it's one of the uh, objectives that we laid out in the beginning, it's uh, auto-scaling. So we mentioned that you know, maybe you need to take advantage of the elasticity in the cloud. Maybe your operations team manually scales up before every major holiday today, if you're kind of a, a sales company. Well, instead of automatically, or having the operations team scale up manually, what if you could do it automatically? Well, that's where auto scale comes in, and it's a part of this kind of operational excellence in this facet of the garage methodology. Now, the last one that I want to mention here is learn, because at the end of the day, you need to be able to learn from the, the processes that you've put in. Now, a simple one here is something like a retrospective. And this is part of an agile flow. Your team is implementing a lot of processes. So let's see you know, what worked well and what didn't. It's the time to take, take that into account. Another one that I want to mention, kind of going on TDD and BDD, is HDD, which is hypothesis-driven development. So we're all aware of requirements that come in from customers, you respond to them, and if they go well, uh, you know, everyone's happy, but sometimes that's too slow. What if you could create conjectures instead, capabilities that your customer might want to use, and then develop those? Well, maybe you won't always be right, but when you are right, that enables you to get ahead of the competition and drive value to your users in new ways. So HDD is one of the key things in the learn step. Now, if I wanted to summarize all of these, I think I would call them into three major steps. Create, execute, and finally, operate. Now, I see these as kind of a cycle, a life cycle for digital transformation. And so with these three steps, you can kind of feel like you're on the right step using some of these technology or approaches that we've talked about. But with IBM Garage, you're not alone. You can co-create, you can co-execute, and you can co-operate. Essentially, it's the speed of a startup at the scale of an enterprise. That's what IBM Garage offers you. You don't have to be alone in learning and uh, uh, kind of instilling all of these different approaches. IBM Garage can help you with those. So if you want to learn more about IBM Garage or you know, dive into a lot of these facets and more of the things that I couldn't cover in this video, check out the links in the description below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. 
If you like it, do you have any comments, be sure to drop a like and a comment below. Thanks, and stay tuned for more videos like this in the future.